With six kids at home, I get asked pretty often, how do I find time to rest or find time for myself or just not lose my mind with that much going on? In this video, I'm sharing how I get my daily, weekly, and kind of homeschool schedule rest in so that I don't lose my mind. Welcome to my channel. I'm Joy. I do videos about Charlotte Mason homeschooling, nature study, and family life. If you've seen my morning routine video over here, how we finish by lunch, that'll kind of explain kind of more of the nitty gritty details. Today, I'm just going to share kind of how my daily rest rhythms look. So to begin, I love to have a start time. And what a start time does for my rest is it allows me to also look at the different increments for kind of when I need to be working and when I can look forward to a break. And that's also helpful for my kids because we kind of expand and we work really hard and then we get exhausted and then we need to kind of contract and there's kind of a lot of that going on throughout the day. So if there's a lot of activity, then we probably need some more restful activities. And then if we're resting a lot, we probably need some type of activity to get us moving again. So in our morning, I have actually set up, okay, if we start at this time, which is eight o'clock, that's our start time right now, then I know that we will have a lot of seat work at first, and then we will have our morning walk. And the morning walk is mostly for me. And that allows me to move my body. I'm just a very active person. I have a lot of energy and my kids are similar. They sometimes complain about going on the walk, but I've really baked it in there because I was so frustrated that I was not able to get outside on a regular basis in the morning. And morning is like my favorite time to be outside. So I just worked it into the school day. The next way that I work rest into our day is that I have a family quiet time or rest time every afternoon when the baby goes down. At, she goes down between 1230 and one o'clock each day. And you just, it's required, you're quiet. So right now, since the weather has turned and it's much nicer, I do allow my kids to be outside, but I have found it it's an important discipline for me to lay down for at least 30 minutes in the afternoon or else I'm too exhausted by the end of the day. So I will go back in my room or sometimes I'll get on the couch. I usually go in my room and lay down. Often I will bring my four-year-old in with me and we'll read stories first and then I'll be able to get my quiet time. I really just need it to be completely quiet. I can't just be reading to them the whole time. So what I've done with my four-year-old sometimes is as I'll say, okay, I'll read you a book or two, and then it's my turn to read my book. So, you know, she gets filled up a little bit, and then I'm able to also get my time where I'm getting recharged, which is important, right? The next way that I work rest into our day is that I have a family quiet time or rest time every afternoon when the baby goes down. At, she goes down between 1230 and one o'clock each day. And you just, it's required, you're quiet. So right now, since the weather has turned and it's much nicer, I do allow my kids to be outside, but I have found it it's an important discipline for me to lay down for at least 30 minutes in the afternoon or else I'm too exhausted by the end of the day. So I will go back in my room or sometimes I'll get on the couch. I usually go in my room and lay down. Often I will bring my four-year-old in with me and we'll read stories first 
and then I'll be able to get my quiet time. I really just need it to be completely quiet. I can't just be reading to them the whole time. So what I've done with my four-year-old sometimes is, as I'll say, okay, I'll read you a book or two, and then it's my turn to read my book. So, you know, she gets filled up a little bit, and then I'm able to also get my time where I'm getting recharged, which is important, right? Another way that I get rest on a daily basis is I have a bedtime. I am pretty strict about bedtime. In fact, I feel like if my kids stay up way past bedtime or bedtime comes and people are doing things, I'm feeling like I'm being asked to work after hours, which is so funny, but that's like the same feeling as if I were at work having to work late or something where it's like, oh, you're eking into my time. So what I've tried to do is have enough of a runway so that bedtime does happen in a leisurely way at the time that I want. Right now, bedtime is eight o'clock. So my kids get probably anywhere from, well, the older ones are still getting 10 or 11 hours of sleep. The younger ones are getting closer to 11 or 12 hours. Just kind of depends on if they actually go to bed on time. I don't typically wake them up in the morning unless I'm trying to get us back into a routine after, you know, a break week or something like that. As I look at my week, I see that I have six days of work uh, that just have to get done. And then I have set aside Sunday, or the Lord set it aside for me. Thanks, Lord. Um, so I have found that the two things that I don't want to be doing on Sundays is cooking a meal and I don't, I don't want to be doing laundry. So the normal things like people need to eat and the baby's diaper needs to get changed and, you know, you got to do just normal chores every now and then those things need to get done just every day, but I can find a way on Saturday, or sometimes I'll even start on Friday, just kind of that idea of a day of preparation so that on Sunday I can rest. So what I'll do typically on Saturday is I'll make double what I was making of my meal. And that's kind of how I cook anyway. I'll try to do another video about how I do my meal planning. But on Saturdays, it's usually a double batch so that we can have the leftovers for the next day. And I'll also have sandwich meat and cheese and probably peanut butter and jelly uh, just so that we're not doing a ton of time in the kitchen on Sundays. And then I also will try to do, just get caught up with the laundry on Saturdays. It doesn't always work. Like if we have a really busy Saturday or if something's happened. So again, I may try to start that activity on Friday and then sometimes I'm playing catch up on Monday, but that has really allowed me to have Sundays be a day of leisure. I do not check my phone. I've been keeping my phone turned off on Sundays. Sometimes that's been difficult just because I have to get in touch with my parents. Um, and then we just rest. I have really enjoyed picking up my nature journal on Sundays or doing a sewing project. These are some things that are activities that cooking and laundry actually kind of eke into my creative time. And so having that extra time allows me to have these activities that recharge me and are, these are skills. These are things that I really want to do on a regular basis. So once I carved that time out and said, oh, Sundays are for nature journaling and embroidery or even reading leisurely, some other books that I haven't been able to get to during the week. Oh, that has been so life-giving for me. And it really does feel like rest. How I schedule rest into our homeschool looks like this. And I do 
our schedule as I plan it six weeks on and then I have one week off and then we go six weeks on. What I do on break week, it's not like we just do nothing. I have some restful things worked into that. Sometimes we visit friends a lot or we do play dates or we will have, I purge a ton on break weeks. And the, the point being that because we are homeschooling and it looks like I'm home all the time, which I am, but I still have the homemaking, home maintenance duties that are required of me that I'm just not able to get to because we're, you know, working, we're doing homeschool. <laughs> so by baking those one week breaks it throughout the school year, that's allowed me to do my homeschool planning. It's allowed me to purge. It allows me to, I don't know, just get to things that I just wasn't able to otherwise get to. Sometimes the kids, every time we do a break week, I'm always amazed at the kids and their pursuit of new interests or like my first grader has been really digging into reading this last break week. But then I am able to just focus on the things more restfully. So those are some of the ways that I have found to work rest into my schedule daily, weekly, and then our homeschool schedule. I'd love to hear from you if you have any ideas for rest and what does rest look like to you? For me, it kind of looks like working in other ways or just refraining from my main duties. And just sometimes it even just looks like laying down for 30 minutes. So I'd love to hear what works for you. And thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.